Hi everyone and welcome to a Dubai vlog. In this video, we're flashing fancy cars and expensive. Uh, in this video, we're discussing what is the best country for you to work for if you're a software developer. More specifically, pros, cons, and specifically five things that are different when you work from various countries. I've personally worked in five, and I'm going to share about the experiences and how much money you make, how much taxes you pay, the living expenses, what your learning curve is like, what your general life around it, people you meet, kind of things. lifestyle is like uh, in these five opportunities these are all i have personally worked for and these are all nuanced experiences so just because i'm saying something against a certain country slash city please don't get offended this is my experience yours could be totally different let's get right into the video first one is bangalore i think it's the home to most techies in the country and uh, it's the place where a lot of people flock right after college because a lot of businesses are built out of there the reason i don't know a lot of initial tech businesses went there the weather there is good that's usually the trend i have seen silicon valley has great weather so does bangalore might be one of the reasons that the country is so well flocked with software developers start with the pay grade fairly good i think if you're joining as a fresher you can easily expect 8 lpa can go up to 1 cr from what i know i think and i could totally be wrong here but as an employee 1 cr is the max you can make 8 lpa is the least you can make and some i mean you can make less than that sorry but somewhere in that range if you're a decent developer you can target you can also inch towards 1 cr Uh, you don't have to make that on day zero. And in India, coming from middle class families, I think it's a decent outcome. Personally, for me, it was Goldman Sachs back in 2018. It was 30 LPA, pretty good. After taxes, what would hit my bank account was around 1.5 L, and I would get a bonus every year of like five lakh post tax, which was pretty good. Uh, the expenses, Bangalore is a little expensive. Personally, for me, I would spend 70, 80 k, uh, 20 k in rent, uh, other expenses. It's a very flashy city as well, so like you party a lot. Uh, that's my other not problem. I think it's a good thing uh, for us to have. So. It's a party city. Uh, unless you can save yourself from the glamour of Bangalore, uh, you'll spend a lot of time partying on weekends and other things. So it gives you less time to work on side projects or maybe if you want, if you have better ambitions, uh, you might not be able to pursue them as an employee. As a founder, it's a great place to be. I think it's great for fundraising. It's great for other things. But as an employee, uh, it may limit your ambition. Although you're in a great sort of culture, as long as you can move from company to company, I think there's a decent uh, path for you to inch towards one CR. As I said, also um, the learning curve there is. decent depends on the company you're in but most companies uh, if you're in service based companies probably not but if you're in a startup your learning curve will be fairly high i was in goldman learning curve was decent it was very specific to a company and that's sort of what happens in big tech but if i think if you're joining a startup and one of the good startups in bangalore i think you can learn a lot and based on that learning uh, build your own startup do your own thing eventually so all in all i give it like a 7 out of 10 uh, my only downside there is like one the flashing is two really bad roads all the operational stuff uh, but the team the people there the teams there are great and uh, of course money you can make is decent average or above average i'd say so let's move to the second one this this is remote work which is working from your home for me it was mohali you for you it could be anything else um, let's start with money um, i think if you move back home especially from bangalore you're targeting to make at least that much if not more um, or even like if it's less it's fine because while well, you're saving a lot of money in your hometown you don't spend much firstly i did this calculation when i was home i was spending around 30 40k all in all my complete family expense because we live in our home own house was like 30 40k which isn't too much and uh, i'm not maintaining two houses now my chandigarh house and my bangalore house is a single house we're staying in expenses go down money usually goes up or stays the same if you're moving from bangalore to your hometown most probably you have a good remote opportunity and remote opportunities generally pay more that's because uh ppp purchasing power parity they don't really care about ppp uh, bangalore on site jobs usually do and hence 100k is like fairly decent number to either start or inch towards uh, 70 70k us dollars is not too bad i think i could totally be wrong this could be coming from privilege but when i started first job was like 50k us dollars which is like 40 lakhs 3 lakh rupees a month yes that was that's like 30 dollars an hour and then slowly easily inch towards like 100k more than that and the good thing about this is once you get in that ecosystem right um, very i wouldn't say it's easy to move but it's easy to move remotely you're in a different grade of people not like technically it's just that you have that knowledge and you have that experience of working remotely so companies sort of prefer you over someone who's currently in bangalore and trying to move so there's this initial plateau moving from an on site job in bangalore to a remote job i feel but once you do it's fairly easy it's like the 0 to 1 is very difficult there 1 to 100 is simpler a uh, lifestyle while you're staying with a family that's the best thing you could do so i i had no complaints if you're looking for a more flashy lifestyle might depends on your hometown but personally for me it was very quiet two years two and a half years that i spent home uh, while remote working and i did not mind that at all taxes you can save a little in taxes you can basically uh, register as a business show expenses things like these so 
slightly better than uh, an on-site job. Uh, the complete money hits your bank account. It's also pegged to the dollar. Peg dollar usually goes up. So all these things sort of add up slowly and steadily. So I feel it's more lucrative but less flashy. Uh, learning curve. I think it's very good. The reason for this is uh, there is less interaction though. In an on-site job, there is more interaction, but also depends on the kind of people you're interacting with. I think in remote work. people are really smart the, the people that you're interacting with because these companies have really strong and tied together teams so everyone is an expert in what they do and so you get to spend time with such people which is great and my learning curve shot up that might be because i was in big tech if you're in a startup in bangalore your learning curve might be good but personally for me it shot up once i got into remote work so those are the pros and cons personally for me best decision i ever made work like 2.5 years like this cool point number 3 us us you could go through multiple paths the first one is h1b pretty lucrative um, if you can directly go from here great work at google india for a year or two or microsoft and then move uh, you can easily make like 150k as the starting salary i think i could totally be wrong here uh, somewhere in that range 120 to 180k uh, which after taxes could be like 100k which is like 70 lakhs after taxes i think isn't too bad uh, or like unachievable only the cost of living also goes up uh, so i think you can all in all save like 30 lakh rupees a year i've never done it so i don't know especially the h1b route The other route is you build a business and go there on B one B two. So you're working with clients. Your business is usually in India, uh, but you have to work with the clients for a month or two. Go there and like not exactly code, but like understand requirements, things like these. Here your expenses will go up for a month. Your taxes are still hit in India because your money still gets hit in India. So all in all, I think this is a better position to be in. Also, you can decide and choose when to go, stay back if you don't have to go stay with your family here. There's like less friction in coming back to India and going back versus I think if you're a full time employee on and a strict visa like S one B gets. People are really scared to come back. Is what I have seen, uh, just because it might be harder to get back in. Also, you have to renew the visa every three years. So, pick and choose. There is also like a lot of safety in big tech in Google US, and also you're working with the best brains in the world. Also, depends on the team. But let's say you're working in the best team there. Then yes, uh, the learning curve is great. There's also an easy path to get into emerging technologies like AI. Go for a master's in AI and move to open AI. I think so. So, I mean, it's very hard for me to move to open AI from India. That is one thing I know. But I'm sure a software developer in Google can find some way. So yeah, there are pros and cons. Uh, lifestyle. So I saw personally, uh, and this could be my experience, but I sort of either flocked with my team or with other Indians that are there. It's very hard to make connections with Goras. I don't know why. Uh, like generally American people, uh, I don't know why that happened. Uh, it's just maybe I was there for a month. That's why. But my team I was fairly well glued with, and like we used to travel, or not exactly travel, but like have dinners and stuff. Uh, I had other Indian friends, people who were doing masters there. I met. But I did not really create a circle outside of it. Uh, also, it's very expensive. Uh, yeah, going out for uh, clubbing a night is like two hundred dollars easy, uh, which is like if you keep calculating everything, it's a lot of money. So uh, I don't think you can do it every day. Uh, so it's less flashy than Bangalore. Uh, you can't party all day. But uh, yeah, you're working like having dinners in Michelin star restaurants, which is cool. Like if, if you like that, and you know, personally for me, I just had food in Indian restaurants. I just paid a lot of money for food I was eating back home, and it wasn't even as good. Uh, but if you like flashiness, I'm sure you can make it work uh, with like uh, 150k, 250k salary in the US. Could totally be wrong here. I have never done it on a longer basis. I did it for a month where I rent a hotel and order every meal out. I'm sure the maths works out if you're there full time and you know paying rent and uh, and and not ordering every meal and you know doing your dishes and food on your own. All in all, definitely uh, an experience worth taking. And then you can decide if you want to come back to India, you can. If not, the only problem is that if you're going through a master's, you probably have student debt. So I think it's hard for people to immediately take risky bets. So just keep that in mind. But if you don't see another easy path to working in the US, working remotely, or increasing your salary above that one CR threshold in India, let's say, then masters is not a bad option. Especially very lucrative if you're stuck in the less than 10 LPA uh, offer range. Pay some money, go for a masters, work really hard, and then go, go get into Google, pay your student debts, and then you're in a very well position, like four to five years. Cool. Fourth point. We're back in India again. Uh, this is working out of a city that's not. Bangalore. Personally, for me, that was Delhi. I have, believe it or not, worked in, out of Delhi for a few startups, and uh, Delhi and Hyderabad. I feel are less flashy, uh, and if you can get equity in a company here, I think it's a decent path to wealth eventually. If the company does well, uh, why do I say this? I say this because uh, I have seen, and I could totally be wrong here, that the businesses here are very profit friendly, uh, focused on profits, and this helps uh, if long-term wealth is what you're looking for. It won't work. it doesn't help a lot during vc bull runs uh, that's during that time you want to be in bangalore uh, in companies that are not yet profitable but have high valuations because you can take out secondaries physics wala for example is a great company that does a lot of profit and is based out of an office in noida from what i know 
pretty decent bet to take like two years ago if you joined them i'm sure your equity would have been worth a lot so looking at these examples i've felt that there are two tier two sort of tier two cities in india basically cities other than bangalore where there are very good entrepreneurs that if you can join or create a startup of your own from here there is high focus on building profits from d0 and if you work there as an employee early and get a lot of equity because they won't usually pay much uh, they're very as i said profit friendly so they don't really give out hefty packages but their equity could be worth a lot and this could happen in bangalore as well totally uh, but personally i've seen examples in front of me like fedex wala who did extremely well like 100x their valuations or whatever in a span of 2 years and for some reason i'm seeing these are coming out of non bangalore cities bangalore has a lot of them don't come behind me i'm sure there are hundreds in bangalore and then there is one in noida but i am seeing a bunch of cities come up in delhi noida hyderabad a bunch of companies come up that are doing fairly well i think it'd be a decent bet for me to take to move out of the flashiness move towards a small office so see i i could have gone to like adi bombay had the most flashiest life for 3 years 4 years i went to rudki i chose computer science and rudki why the reason was ke i want to focus on this core skill set i don't really care about the noise for the f- next few years that's sort of the similar bet i think i'm you can take here which is yes there is bangalore will give you the best lifestyle period most probably if if parties is what you're looking for network is what you're looking for but if you're looking for two solid entrepreneurs who you know or like there's a good chance are going to build a billion dollar company i would take that bet in delhi i would move away from the fashiness i would go to that dirty shitty office in noida work from there and help them build their startup and i think that be decent bet this is again a very nuanced experience but uh, i would have taken that bet versus uh, you know and say i get 40 lakh in bangalore uh, which after taxes like i think 2 2 2.5 2. lakh rupees versus i get 1 lakh but i get decent equity in the noida company i'd go there if i of course feel the entrepreneurs building the company are solid and there is a path to profitability cool just wanted to cover this taxes here are none you learn very less uh, and uh, whenever you get a, new, a liquidity event you can make more point number 5 more relevant to everyone here we're in dubai So I wanted to cover countries like Dubai, Hong Kong, Japan. These are companies that either you can move to as a remote software developer through on like freelancer visas, uh, or there are companies here that hire. I know when I was in college, Japan had this uh, company called Mercari that used to hire. Um, today I think also they hire, and Dubai has a bunch of companies as well. I've seen a bunch of Indians here working as software developers. Uh, so let's start with pay grade. It's average. It's like you can you can target a hundred k, but it's an on-site job, so you have to go to the office. All that jazz, nine to five. um taxes here are it is in dubai or nil i think japan are also not too bad so those two things are covered um country lifestyle dubai is great if you're an indian japan probably not not a lot of network there uh, but here it's a, there are like a lot of indians here so you can, if you feel like partying it, it has the right places it has hindi songs everywhere and it has the right network so that way dubai is very cool uh learning curve here also there are very close knit startups people don't really need to fill offices um I did not get hired by a company here. I'm here for some other business. But the people who did get hired, a bunch of friends of mine, are basically into companies. They're making hundred k firstly. They're into companies that require a certain skill set, um, and they have that skill set. It's very similar to remote work, where you're getting hired for a specific skill set. So there is not a lot of bulk hiring here. But if you look out, I don't think a lot of people look out here. I'm sure after this video they will. Uh, but if you look out, there are a lot of opportunities there, and they pay above Indian pay grade uh, because again PPP hits here as well. it is also possible you don't get paid a lot here there are lower service based companies here as well but if you get into the right company there are a lot of web3 companies here and all of them have like a standard of 70k 50k us dollars 70k us dollars for a software developer senior mid to senior software developer uh, even after uh, right after college i think so if you want to get into web3 it's a decent place to be uh, and slowly hong kong and japan japan are becoming that as well so i think these are three countries where people will get hired especially if you're on this channel and you will be learning web3 from me in a few months to come these three countries you can target or like are tax friendly pay a lot of money have decent lifestyle as well i think it's a, if you feel like moving out of india i think southeast asia is going to be solid i think it might just be better than us in a few years i could totally be wrong here this is a bet but i have strong conviction that these three are going to become a lot of financial capitals especially when it comes to web3 and if the bull run comes when the bull run comes there will be a lot of talent required here so i would target these companies i would try to move here even for a mildly paying job 50k 70k us dollars when the bull run comes switch around if you're from india during the bull run uh, getting here might be tough if you are here already shifting might be easy you have visa sorted you have to go to the office and interview so i would keep that at the back of my head personally very excited about these three countries by probably going to be here in the next 
year or a few years i'm going to probably be spending most of my time in southeast asia which is why i included it although my experience isn't a lot here purely based on experiences from my friends which hasn't been too bad everyone here is very happy so that was point number 5 five countries rated uh, in terms of learning curve did i rate here learning curve learning curve would be great you're probably learning curve is similar to remote work where you're being hired for something and you'll be given tasks you have to figure them out that's the highest learning curve you have so yeah five countries pick and choose whatever you want of course depends on the kind of opportunity you get but of course opportunities you will get if you look out a little bit so hopefully you got some knowledge nuggets here uh, which you can use to decide at least targeting a country or the best one as we all know is remote work do remote work probably the highest paying is remote work though why why because you're being hired there for something also you have zero expenses i did that for 2.5 years best time of my life and also very um, it's like marginally very profitable right your, your margins are really high you don't have as many expenses i would start there but if you're not that person you want to work with a team go on site then my preference would probably be southeast asia then us then bangalore then uh southeast asia then noida then us then bangalore and then remote work is basically at the top cool thanks everyone hopefully you like the video and let me know if you need a vlog from here although i think these knowledge nuggets make more sense i'll see you in the next one bye bye